Hello, my name is Michael Glenn, and in this episode of the Dojo Show, we're studying the kata Mizutori. Mizutori means water bird, and if you ever watched a water bird fishing, they have a stillness about them and a focus that is very useful when you're trying to understand Jupo Seisho. continuing on Thursday nights to explore um, uh, Jupo Seisho as a way to uh, introduce the themes for this year that I've studied in Japan with Hatsumi Sensei. Um, in Japan uh, this year and, and for many years, but uh, this year specifically, I've heard him use the term Jupo Seisho a bunch, uh, in addition to all the other themes for this year. So it's, uh, it's evidently something that's really on his mind and, and very important to understanding what's going on uh, this year. So uh, James is starting out in Daijudan. I'm going to start out here in this uh, Shizen looking no kamai, right? So uh, he cuts, I drop here, and then I stab. Okay, that's the kata. Okay, so he cuts, I'm here, I stab it. Okay, it's a very simple looking kata. Uh, not much to it. Let's try the other way. A little bit this way, there you go. So I'm in Shiza in here, I drop here, both hands, stab. Okay. First of all, uh, the grip with the kunai is like this. Okay, so, and I'm hiding it behind my leg here. This is uh, what it says to do in the kata, right? Um, so he wouldn't necessarily know I have this. Okay, so you're just hiding it here. So the second piece says, after he cuts, you don't evade too soon or too far. Okay, I, I keep saying that with all the muto dori we've been doing this year, but it's something you can't repeat enough, right? So watch my evasion here, he cuts. So you see how close that was and how the timing that I moved? Yeah. What would you say about that timing? Any uh was insane. The rhythm was insane. Well, from my perspective, uh, James, did you have a feeling about it? Or it was with my cut, so the more my uh, sword came at him, the more he moved. But he only moved in a court with the sword. So uh, this point that James mentioned is important. I'm allowing the sword cut to push me. Okay, I'm not moving separately from the cut. It's pushing me out of the way, right? Uh, it's hard to develop that ability, but that's what you should work for. So again, so here, okay. And then the second piece that's really important is this position that I end up in. It's something you guys have all heard me talk about a lot, this leg position, right? It's one we use for rolling, it's one we use for shiko. Uh, it's a very stable and important position, okay? So from my evasion, I go to that position. So here, here, okay? Right now I'm not even focusing on this, I'm just trying, I want you guys to get this part, okay? I saw people when I was watching, people were doing all kinds of things with their their legs like they were like this or you know they had them all different positions it should be this way lead knee pointing towards your target rear knee like this for support the foot is on the toes okay uh, this is important because uh, if he, he's there 
and I don't feel like this is a great spot for me to be, you know, I can use it to get out, right? Uh, I can move quickly from that position. So it's important to kind of get that position down, okay? And it's also really stable. So uh, try again, please. So let's look at another detail with this. Uh, obviously this kata is, looks really simple and it, um, you know, just because you poke him in the belly, right, doesn't mean that he's going to stop fighting. Uh, if this is sharp enough, it might stab, right? But he still may have a lot of fight left in him after that, right? So uh, from here, right, I duck here and I haven't, I'm not even close enough to get him yet, right? My position. So from, from here, I jam in. Okay, so I, I rise up and, and uh, stab. So here, right? And then after my stab, I just keep driving. Right? Yeah, it's hard for him to cut me while he's being stabbed and pushed away, right? If he, uh, uh, over here just a bit, you were blocking the camera there. If he um, uh, tries to pull away and cut, uh, I, there's different things I can do. I can stay with him or, or something else. So here, right, if he tries to pull away and cut, I can stay with him, right? Or, one more. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to stab in here, right, and drive, and he's going to pull away. So if he pulls away like he wants to pull away and counter, I have a choice. I can stay with him or allow him to go and attack him, like throw this into him or something, right? So I don't have to, I don't want to be in that in-between spot where he can cut me, okay? I need to be really tight or far. That in-between spot is very dangerous because he has the advantage with the sword, okay? Everybody add this little piece. So from your, uh, your position here, see how I'm stabbing? This way, okay. Uh, from this position, I'm, as I stab with my knees, it naturally turns into a step, and then I keep stepping. Okay? So try that. I'm going to change my uh, grip on this now. Uh, before, I was using this grip, right? And Sensei, when he uses the kunai or the jute, he changes grip frequently, even within one technique, right? And he always uh, suggests we do the same, uh, use the weapon freely like that, right? So I'm going to change from this grip uh, now to this reverse grip. Okay, so it's going to change some things in the kata. So here, okay, so right into his hands here, okay. So after I hammer this into the hands, I come up and you see what can happen next, right? Into his hands, then this rises up. You see how I've opened Gregory up here, okay? So there's a lot of things that can happen at that point. <laughs> right into the hands, okay? I'm not really doing it to you guys because it sucks, but you strike, right? And then this obviously can come down into the collar bone area. You can attack elsewhere, right? So you, this is like Sanshin from here. Bam! Just like Sanchin, okay? I'm using the butt of this to strike up into Kote. This other hand here uh, has to do something specific, right? So I'm here. See, I've pulled it. Okay, that's so this will clear. If I'm like this onto Will, you know, I might get cut here or on my elbow, right? But instead I pull this here, okay? Once more. So here, right? And then it can open up this way. You guys understand? So it's, you know, Sanchin. Try it. So here, I strike into these hands, right? As I raise up now, this is my position, okay? So you see I've used this reverse grip to, to bring this up this way. Once more, so here, right? And then 
the same stab we've been doing. See how I'm coming alongside James, right? And it's backed up with my body, so I just yoko a rookie with this driving into his body. I know you're exploring there, James, but um, I can't have the sword. No, no, it's cool, it's cool. So, this is my target, right? And then from here, it just pivots. So it just pivots from that point right in. As you stand up, it pivots? Yeah. As you start, as you start pressing, as you start pressing, it pivots. So the press can start from down here even, right? So Hatsumi Sensei, when he does these kind of kata, does a million henka, right? It's Jupo Seisho, so Jupo Seisho ends up being infinite. Um, and so we're going to start to explore some of those infinities. Uh, it's a little hard to present infinity in a class, right? But uh, I'm going to do my best to show some of the henka that I've uh, picked up over the years, or the feeling that I've picked up from Soke, right? So uh, can you be there, James? So uh, again, this is behind the leg here, right? So James cuts, this time it's on this side of my arm, okay? So I use this to stab, okay? You see when I stab, it's connected to my hip here. When, I, when James fell away from me, I wasn't like that, right? I was connected at my hip, moving in. Okay, over here, please. So this is behind here. So you guys might not be able to see the kunai, but it's shielding me here. Okay, so then I let that flip over and stab. Okay. Here. See where this is stabbing? You guys? Here. One more. So here, I let that rotate over and stab strike yeah if he backs out from the stab then you have to adjust right and because he backed out the distance became longer so I had to adjust yeah. right here let that rotate over okay it's like a prison shanking right <laughs> all right so the initial move is here and this is like a shield for me and then I flip the sword over and drive this into the body okay try please uh, this first move is very relaxed okay so I'm here I'm relaxed okay I'm not trying to block or anything like this that makes it more obvious it's a very relaxed move okay so here and then to flip this over, I don't want to do it with my hands, because I'll never win that battle. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got a long weapon here, he's in a stronger stance than me. Right? So here, the way I flip it is with my body. So you see from down here, I rise up and then let this come in. Okay? One more. So here, let this rise up, and then he gets shanked. Okay. So if you uh, didn't get that one, uh, this one will probably be bad too. <laughs> uh, so starting with the same Kamai here, right? The wheel comes in. See, I'm on this side now. So from here, it's a simple strike there, and then a drive in. Okay. So again, wheel cuts. I'm here. Okay. Soke likes to use these flips with these weapons, so it's right there, right? You see, uh, that hurts a lot. So that's why I didn't do it the first time, but I had to do it at least once, so you know what happens. So from here, it strikes into Kote. 
strikes into Cote and then you just press in. If he cuts, let me see him here. Okay. You see James backing out. Yeah. And so if the guy backs out again, it's like we said before, you either stay with him or you let him back out and you throw some throw something at him, right? One more time, please. So here. This is shielding, right? And then you let it flip to the cote there and then drive in. It's different targets. He turned sideways to me, so I went for uh, Koi, right? So you'll find a different target depending on how they react. When I'm bringing this on the side here, there's something specific that has to happen, right? So I'm here, I receive this way. When I go to flip it over, this other hand gets on it right away, okay? So it's here and it flips with the other hand on it right away. So here. See, this allows this control over his cote here. Okay, and it's chopping, slicing. You can stay on it if you want. So, so you see this time it's blade up. Oh, I see. Under, underneath his cote. Okay. So here. And then you see that just threads through to kill him. Yeah. So I, I just killed him by slicing across the neck there. Uh, Will. Everybody gets killed on Halloween, right? So here. So this is where I decide if I want to kill him. This uh, next one we're going to do with the surugi. This is part of the theme for this year is using this weapon. Uh, so when you do it in this kata, it's um, going to make some changes. One of the main ones being distance. Okay. This is a lot longer than the uh, jute or the kunai or the kodachi, right? Uh, so it's got a distance uh, issue. Uh, some uh, surugi are shorter. So I've seen them down almost this short, right? Uh, so there are some that are shorter, so you would do it more like the normal kata. But with a big one like this, it's going to change things a little bit. Can you hand that to James? So if I'm using this uh, longer uh, ken or surugi, right, from here, you see that my distance is longer, okay? And I could do the same kata we've been doing, stabbing in, letting this shield against the kote there. Um, you can do that, right? So he cuts, bam! I'm hitting the fingers right away. So with my evasion, I'm hitting kote immediately, okay? I, d I didn't do that with the metal one because it's just too mean, right? So here, right away you're hitting the fingers and kote and you see after that you know even if he hasn't let go of his weapon then you can pierce right another option is to come in at this kind of angle so that you're covered here okay so then it's just up into the throat once more James so either fingers right you see my body position, it's still the same one we've been using. Yep. Yeah, sorry James. Or you have the tip up towards the sky here. So this allows me to be covered if he were to swing, right? And then I drive up into his throat. Hey guys, you wanna do another? Oh, wait, sorry, reverse grip this time, okay. So you remember before how we were hitting Kote here? So I'm doing that same thing. Now as I rise up. So here, striking Kote. Okay, I'm not really doing it because this thing is so heavy. But I'm hitting his hands or his arm, right? And then as I rise up, I let this slide into the space here. And it becomes like a hombo technique. Right? Sensei has been doing a lot of things with the surugi that look like hanbo, right? So that's an important detail. So into the hands, here. Rise up, and then you're there. So this is the same if you are on the outside. So I strike up here. Okay. 
So if you have one with a long suka like this, yeah, you explain. Uh, it changes a bit, right? So here, so instead of trying to hit with the kashira here, it's a little hard because this is too long, right? So again, so instead I just sealed here, okay? And then I let this hit him in the nuts there, right? And here we go. If, if he hadn't let go of the sword yet, I give him the knee, right? Break his elbow with the knee. You got options there, right? So it changes with the, if you have a different style, Surugi or Ken. Okay? Try that. Anybody have any questions about these uh, basic Muto Dori drills? Yeah, yeah, if you, uh, a lot of people make the mistake of holding their breath uh, during tense situations, right? So, uh, yeah, you have to stay relaxed with the breathing, you know, and try to breathe naturally. Did you have a question about that, or that was just a, a point? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you, if, if you uh, keep your awareness uh, attentive but relaxed, um, it helps to keep the breath relaxed. Um, when you allow uh, tension in the form of fear or, or just uh, you know, standard apprehension to what's about to happen, um, that can move through your body in a way that kind of shuts the breath down. You know? And so if, uh, if you're experiencing fear or apprehension about a situation, um, uh, try to allow your awareness to take over. Like, uh, instead of the fearful feeling, let your awareness fill that same mental space uh, that the fear is taking over, right? And that's easier said than done, right? But it's, uh, uh, in my experience, that's been very helpful, uh, that kind of attitude or approach.